Hey, welcome back. So this time I want to explain how to edit bust ups, which are these graphical UI elements that you see all throughout P5. It's those little portraits that pop up next to the text box that show like the different emotions of the character. And thankfully, I have a tool that makes it pretty simple to edit those. Just go to the GitHub link in the description and download and extract bust up editor. And when you run it, you've got this kind of blank form here. And it'll start to make more sense if you go up to File, New Project, and then choose either Event or Navi. Chances are you'll want Event because that's what's going to be used for all the dialogue portraits. And once you do that, it'll already kind of give you a list of all of the portraits in the game. And if you click on one, it'll show you all of these properties down here. Now to make it even more clear what we're doing, you can go over to Tools and choose Extract Bust Up Bins. And if you go to your extracted CPK folder, in the base CPK, in the bust up folder, you can see we have all of these bin files here. So if you want to extract them all, you can just go up to the very first one and click it to highlight it, then scroll all the way down. And while holding shift, click the bottom most one and then choose open. And that should select them all and extract them all. Which can take a little bit of time, but if you're patient, eventually you'll have all these extracted to a folder. You'll see that we've created an extracted folder right here next to all of the bust up bins. And if you go in there, each of these folders has a bunch of DDS files, which if you zoom in, you might be able to see a thumbnail, but maybe not. So what I'll do is I'll open all of these in paint.net so that we could see them. And there you go, these are the images that were inside those bins. So you'll see that they have some sprites for like blinking and mouth movement. And in order to preview these in the program, all you have to do is take the path to that extracted folder, or you can click right here and navigate to the extracted folder. And now if you click on one of those bust up entries in the list, it'll actually load a preview of what the corresponding bust up looks like. If you want, you can make it smaller by changing the scale number down here for the preview. So you can change it to something like 25. And you can also preview the animation frames. If you change the frame number right here, you can see the talk animation with the mouth. And over here, if you do it, you can see the blink animation. And because of the scaling, it might not look perfectly aligned, but if you change it back to 100% scaling, it should look pretty good. So now let's talk about how we edit these. So down here to the left, you'll see that we have the base position X and Y. And that's basically where the game is going to try to place this on the screen. And I don't really know what this is relative to, probably like the bottom left corner or something. So you'll have to play around with this to get it exact. I didn't really have a way to represent this in the preview. So just know that if you need to move it closer or farther away from the text box or up and down, that's how you would do that, is by changing these values. And same thing goes with the eye and the mouth positions which are basically where it's going to overlay the mouth and the eye sprites on top of the base image. And you can actually see these in the preview if you change the eye frame or the mouth frame to anything other than zero so that they show up. And then you can move it around by changing those values. That's pretty much the whole purpose of the preview here, to help you line this up in case you have like a custom image that you're trying to import. And you can also change the animation type. So if you don't want the mouth or the eyes to animate, you can choose from the list right here. And finally, if you scroll even further down, you'll see that you can change the character's name, the expression name, or the outfit name. And those are just purely for the list right here for our own reference. So I'm going to download this Dojima sprite from the Spriter's resource, and I'm going to replace Sojiro with this. Let me just open these up in an image editor and make sure that the resolution is a 4x4 resolution. Otherwise the game's going to crash trying to load these. So that's 1024 and 512. I already know those are good numbers, but just in case you're not sure, you can look up the nearest multiple calculator and set the nearest to 4 and then type in your number and it'll tell you whether it's a multiple of 4 or not. And if not, it'll show you which number is the closest one so that you can either scale it or crop it or whatever you need to do. One thing I do want to make sure I do here though is crop out this transparency and the reason for that 
is it'll get overlaid on top of the sprite and it'll kind of erase whatever's underneath it kind of like this where you can see the bottom half is missing because of the transparency so actually i'll show you what i mean right now if you go down here if you scroll down below animation type you'll see that we can also choose a replacement base image and you can choose either a png or a dds for this so let's choose our dojima base image and then we can choose one of those blink frames and by the way if you don't have any blink frames or mouth frames or anything for your sprite don't worry about that if you don't it'll just be replaced by a really small transparent square by default all right so next i'll change the character so right down here i'm changing the character name from sojiro to dojima and now if i reload this you'll see that the very first sprite is now dojima and it's overriding the preview with these PNGs that we specified right here. So if I were to remove that and then click back on it, it would go back to being Sojiro. And if you click refresh up here, it'll reflect the changes that we made to the names in the list here. So if we want to save what we've done so far, we can just go up to file, save project, and then let's say Dojima event bust up or something like that. So now, if we close the program and then come back, you can simply load the project file and all of your changes should still be in place. So here you'll see if I change the mouth frame, then down here it becomes transparent because I need to move that mouth frame all the way up and it looks like up is a negative number in this case. So I'm holding the down arrow so that it goes up and this is the whole issue I was talking about earlier with the transparency. It will be a lot easier to line this up with the base image if I remove that. So what I can do is select everything right up until that last pixel and then I can crop it to the selection. And this is where I really have to check if it's still divisible by 4 or not. I got 512 by 198. So 198 looks like I need to take these extra two pixels off the nose here because that's not really needed for the mouth animation anyway. And you can also do that by changing the canvas size and making it anchored to the bottom. That's another way you can do it. And same thing for the head here. It looks like when I crop it, it's got an extra two pixels, so it's not a multiple of four. So I have to make it either 316 or 312. So just like before, I'm taking those extra two pixels and I'm cropping it so that it's 312. Okay, perfect. And let's move that all the way up here. And if you need finer control, go ahead and change the preview scale to 100. So now that we got it animating nice, let's do the same for the eyes. Now in the bust up folder and in the data folder, the bust up param.dat contains all of this data right here. And because we changed some of those numbers, we need to make a new one. So if I go to file, export, and then params.dat, you can choose an output folder for that. P5R Essentials, CPK, Main, and then create a bust up folder. And then I'll choose that bust up folder as the location. And when you export the params.dat, it should automatically just create a data folder to put it in. And it's pretty much the same deal with exporting the bust up bins. If you choose that, and then choose that same bust up folder that we chose before, it'll say, Done exporting new bin files. It's taking any bust up entry from the list here where we specified custom images and it's converting those images to DDS and packing them into bins for us. So if you go into that folder, you'll see that we now have a bin file. And keep in mind if it says zero bytes, that seems to be a bug with my program where once you close the program completely, it'll finally say that that file size actually has bytes. And then you can run the game. So there we go pretty much perfect. So now let's talk about cut-ins. Those are the images that kind of comic book style tear through the screen and then show you like a more emotional reaction from the character. So if you want to edit those, those are going to be in the base CPK cut-in folder. And there's a few folders inside that. We just need to focus on these two folders right here, this UT arc folder and this table folder. So to edit these, you want this P5 cut-in table editor here, and when you download it and extract it, you'll see cut-in table editor.exe, that's what you want to run. The first thing you want to do once you open that is set the game version to P5R PC right here. Next, go to File, 
open table and now let's go back into our cut end directory here and go into the table folder and choose any of these so main should be for the main cast com should be for confidants and then sub should be for everyone else basically that has cut ins so if i go to two seven right here it's going to load a list of images down here with some of the properties very similar to with the bust up editor and if you go to this button right here that says unpack cut-ins you have the option to unpack them and extract the images from them so kind of like what we did with the bust ups you have to do that to extract the dds images to see the preview so go to the ut art folder and then choose select folder and then for the output folder you can just make a new folder wherever then you can just edit the images that have a matching id 0207 so i've opened those up in paint.net and let's say that we have these replacement images here i'm just going to overwrite the original files with these now we just have to worry about getting these iframes lined up so this is the trick i like to use let me select this region right here with the selection tool and let's make sure that whatever is inside the selection is the area that changes between these different frames here that we've drawn and what i like to do is create a new layer and then put some kind of color here in the selected area using the fill tool so now i can simply use the magic wand tool to select this layer and i can copy and paste it onto the other images in the new layer so that it's consistent for each image where I have that red square selected, I can go to the layer underneath it. And while that area is still selected, I can press Ctrl C to copy. So now I've got my half blinking animation that I can use and I can go ahead and paste it onto here to replace the original Ryuji blink animation. And also when you're saving these, make sure that you save it as a DDS and also make sure you're saving it as a DXT5 so that way you can keep all of the transparency if there happens to be any in the frame we also need to go down to file and then choose open frames so if you back out you can go to the UT arc folder and then go to wherever your extracted UT arc files are choose an image that has one of these same IDs so 0, 0, 02 and then 07 now that you've done that, if you change which one is selected in the list, you should be able to see a preview. Now, if not, you can go here, you can go to view, and then change the scale so that it's smaller, so that way you can see all of the image at once. So for the ones where the entry type is an eye frame, like an eye blinking frame, you'll be able to change the X and Y coordinates, just like with the bust up editor. And if you just change these down here, you can line it up until it looks about right. And just like before, it's a little bit easier to do this when you have it at full resolution. So you can go back here and do it without the scaling. And you can also go up here and choose inverse direction if you want to see what it looks like when it's flipped. Because when we export this, it's going to export one that's flipped and one that's not. And if everything looks okay, then you can just go ahead and choose repack cut-ins right here. And in order to repack these, Let's go to the files that we edited in the extracted UT art folder. And yeah, so these 027 ones right here. So if I want to avoid repacking everything in this folder, I can just copy only the ones that I edited and then I can move these to their own folder. I made a new folder called test, for example. I'm just gonna paste those inside there. So this test folder is where I want to edit the input folder for repacking. And then it's going to have you choose an output folder. So I think I'll make this output folder right here. And then when it's done, it'll tell you done repacking cut-ins. And here's our repacked files right here. Now for the table, if you changed any of these numbers, which you probably did have to do if you had to realign the eye blinking frames, you can go to save table and you can either overwrite the existing one or you can go to save table as. And then you can find where you want to save that to. I think it is easier just to overwrite that one so that you don't have to go figure out which file name that you picked in the beginning. So if you check, this is going to be 0207. So let's find out where we should put this in our mod. We just need to recreate the path up to where we found these originally. So if I was going to use my Adachi mod as an example, then in the P5R Essentials CPK main CPK folder, we can create a cut-in folder, and inside that, we just need UT arc, 
0 main 0, and then we can put our change frames in there. So the .000 and .001 files go in there. And for the other file, because it's a .dat file, let's put it in table, and then 0 main 0, and then paste that in there. And now you should be good to go. So for testing codons, I would recommend using my P5 mod menu, which is still a work in progress, but if you go to the releases here, and then you go to this 1.9 for PC only, you can download the mod here and then you can extract it into your reloaded mods folder. So just make sure that you have it enabled and reloaded and then launch the application. So to use the mod menu, just press the N key. And okay, okay. to test the cut-ins, I'm gonna go to call, and then I'm gonna choose cut-in. And then you just choose the character and then the direction the cut-ins are facing. And it's gonna show you how the cut-ins that you may have edited are looking in-game. It's just gonna cycle through all of them for that specific character. And that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to explain with this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.